Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know Nahate, Shurite and Tomarite are not karate styles? Whenever someone starts looking at the origins of karate, they usually come across the term tode. I already made a video about this and I regularly refer to the Okinawan origins of karate. When you look a little further, the names Shurite, Nahate and Tomarite also appear. However, an important side note has to be made here. When tode is a correct term to use when referring to the original Okinawan karate, this is not the case for the other terms. Shurite, Tomarite and Nahate are only rough regional classifications of the quintessential martial arts that were practiced by the warrior family or Shizoku in Okinawa. I'm paraphrasing a story Hanshi Patrick McCarty once told me. There was once a grand festival held in Okinawa when the Japanese emperor came to visit. In this festival, Tode was also a part of the show and several kata were performed. When asked about what was shown, the Okinawans were forced to say it was Tode, meaning Chinese hand, and since at that time, in the late 19th century, China and Japan weren't at all on speaking terms, the name Tode would have to be omitted. As a solution, the martial art that was shown was named after the different hometowns of the performers, namely Shuri, Te, Naha, Te and Tomari Te. This means that they are not styles as we know it, as depending on which old master practiced it, they were either similar or different. I'll try and shed a little light on these artificial styles. First, there's Shurite. When talking about this, they usually refer to Itosu's lineage of karate. Knowing this, it is not some ancient karate or tode style, because Itosu lived in the late 19th, early 20th century. The type of tode that was practiced in the village of Shuri, however, was called Suidi and was very different from our understanding of Itosu's Shurite. Next, there is Nahate, usually used as a term when talking about Higaona's brand of karate, and therefore situated in the same era as Shurite. The tode that was historically practiced in Naha, Nafadi, was also quite distinct from what we know as Nahate. Finally, there's Tomarite. This is probably best known as a style practiced by multiple choki. However, within multiple ryu, no such claim is made. Multiple choki didn't even come from Tomari, but from Shuri. It was Nagamine Shoshin, founder of Matsubayashi Ryu, who, was, uh, who made the claim that Motobu was Tomarite, because Motobu was a student of Matsumura Kosaku, who did restore Tomarite. Like the other two, there existed a form of tode in Tomari called Tomaidi, but like the other two, this was quite different from what we know as Tomari Te. Now this is uh, just superficial of course, as all masters from that time usually mix different parts of the different origins in their karate. For example, Itosu's karate, which was known as Shuri Te, was actually about 40% Shuri and 60% Naha meaning he used old Shuri Kata to create his new Kata for school education, like the Pinan series. However, these old Shuri Kata were partly from elsewhere. I could go on, but one thing is becoming more clear in all this. When you look at the official history everyone knows about, certain cracks are visible that can't just be explained by there weren't enough written sources. When karate came to Japan, and I have mentioned this before, it was important that everyone was on board. So there are many stories from karate's origins that were often just made up hero stories. So the Japanese were motivated to adopt karate as their own martial art because it was cool. Andreas Quast helped me greatly in researching the historical facts I mentioned here. He asked the following question. Who first mentioned Tomarite. He found an answer to this question and unsurprisingly it was Funakoshi Gichin who first mentioned the term in writing in 1913 when he said the following 
<clears throat> the styles of karate, every now and then, people call them Shurite, Nahate, and Tomarite, as if they existed separately. While there are these people, uh, this fallacy will unravel itself when the real reason of the style's origin is clarified. As regards this, since ancient times, karate has been divided into two branches, called Shorei Ryu and Shorin Ryu. The first is a school that places emphasis on the body, Tai, and the latter one emphasizes the method, Jutsu. Wai Shin San belongs to the former, and Iwa belongs to the latter. Wai Shin San is a wild, fat-bodied warrior, and Iwa is a quick-witted, lively and accomplished man with a slim body. Naha draws from the Shorai Ryu, and Shuri enters the Shorin Ryu. Tomari has combined these two things by becoming the so-called middle hand. Tomari Te was made into an individual school. So, Funakoshi says this in 1913, that Shuri Te, Naha Te and Tomari Te didn't exist as such. Rather, that the correct names would be Shorai Ryu and Shorin Ryu, with Tomari Te to be a mix of the two. I personally like the description of the Shorai Ryu to be for the wild fat-bodied warrior, while Shorin Ryu is for the quick-witted slim-bodied warrior. I'm definitely going to do a video about these two, three distinct categories of karate. I feel like though, it's been a while since the last karate legend, so next week is story time again where I'll tell the story behind one of the most popular kara, Kushanku. So tell me, did you know about the three original styles? Did you know they weren't organically but artificially named? Would you consider your karate to be Shorin, Shorei, or a bit of both? Put your ideas down below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That's it for now. Have a great day and as always, Thanks for watching.